shooter. But he had his best game on Saturday as a Hoya. 25 points, 5 of 6 from three-point range. He was comfortable. He was in the flow. He was looking for his opportunities. Obviously, Georgetown would like him to back that up here again tonight. James Breeding, Kip Kissinger, Keith Kimball, the officials tonight. And we are underway in this Big 12 Big East battle matchup. The Big East leading 1-0 after Marquette's blowout victory over number 6 Baylor last night in Milwaukee. For Texas Tech, it's their first game since last Wednesday, a loss to Ohio State. Lost two of their three games in Maui. Six to shoot on the opening possession. Freshman Pop Isaacs had his shot rejected by the returning Brandon Murray, the LSU transfer, who missed the last two games with a lower body injury. And Murray coming back, Brendan, that's a huge boost for the Hoyas. Well, it's not just his ability to score. And right on cue right there, Ted, is Murray making the jumper. But more importantly, as Patrick Ewing expressed to us this afternoon, it's his leadership that they've missed. You see the Texas Tech lineup. Isaacs, the freshman. Jalen Tyson, the Texas transfer. Davion Harmon, the Oregon transfer, back in the Big 12. Kevin O'Banner in his second year, one of the few returners from Texas Tech's Sweet 16 team a year ago, missing from long range. Here is Heath. Murray wants another three. This time too strong. Good offense by Georgetown. If you follow Texas Tech defensively, they're going to want to keep you on a sideline and force your baseline. But if you can get out of it, you have sharp ball movement, you'll get looks on the backside. Isaacs the lob and Daniel Bacho with the finish. That has been a common sight here early in Bacho's sophomore season. And if you're a Red Raider fan, what's nice is Isaacs a freshman, Bacho a sophomore. So just young players who are already playing at a high level. Kudus Wahab beginning his second stint with Georgetown misses the jumper spent last year at Maryland after his first two years were with the Hoyas O'Banner getting inside against a cook a cook with the block count it though it's a goaltend yeah Texas Tech has the lead there's that last offensive possession Ted from Texas Tech they overload that right side so you've taken away built-in help nice little screen great connection as we mentioned between Isaacs and Bacho here's Primo Spears the Duquesne transfer out to Jay Heath misfiring on the three Tyson on the run for Texas Tech attacking Heath there's a cook with a clean block and out of bounds to Texas Tech a cook a cook the Yukon transfer second in the Big East averaging two and a half blocks here on the young season watch this right here ability to run the floor watch him come into your screen right here and boom and just it's not just the length and athleticism it's also the timing Jalen Tyson with a savvy move in the lane to extend the lead Tyson transferred midseason last year going from Texas back to the school he was originally committed to before Chris Beard took the Texas job. Pass deflected by O'Banner and stolen by Pop Isaacs. Oh, Tyson lost the handle and it's out of bounds to Georgetown. You know, Tech turned, turned it over on that uh, possession right there, but this is what Georgetown brings and you, you mentioned a cook a cook as you see him right there but Wahab is also brings tremendous length rim protection and so when you go in there you got to be aware of that and Texas Tech talked about that today especially those guards Ted when you drive it you got to play off two feet because they will leave the ground if you play under control that's something to watch here as the game progresses tonight and offensively Patrick Ewing wants to get a cook a cook more touches he has been really a revelation more playing time early this year than he ever received at Connecticut Wahab on the interior doesn't drop Damarian Williams is in number three and white did not play in Texas Tech's last game against Ohio State Kerwin Walton the North Carolina transfer off the mark
Spears has been Georgetown's leading scorer so far. In his first year coming over from Duquesne, Heath contorting his body, Bacho clears it. Had a foul called as Davion Harmon was trying to work inside. Well, Patrick Ewing is in his sixth year, the Hoya legend, the Hall of Famer. He says his team is a work in progress. Listen, ugly scene last year. Went winless in the Big East, Brendan. So far this year, losses to Northwestern, Loyola Marymount, and for the first time in 40 years, won to American University, their crosstown foe. Isaacs hits the three. We'll go back to Coach Ewing. One of the things that, I mean, you can see it right here in person. I mean, they have some pieces here. Now, they're not very deep this year, Ted, but if they can stay healthy, they got a trio of guards that can flat out score. They got a couple of bigs that can defend, rebound, and that keep you honest by throwing it in there. So they've got to improve defensively and get more consistent within the game itself. Spears launches too strong. Rebound for Robert Jennings, one of five freshmen for Texas Tech. Ten newcomers on this team, just three returners from the team that went to the Sweet 16 and lost to Duke a year ago. Texas Tech has scored nine in a row. Under ten to shoot. Walton guarded by Heath. Isaacs looking for another three. It's short. Skip past Heath. Got Isaacs off his feet. And Heath cans the three. Ending the Georgetown drought. <laughs> Heath backpedals right there and lets the fans know it. But obviously you see that ball go through the basket on the road. That's always a good thing early. And Kerwin Walton stepped out in front of the Georgetown bench. Texas Tech up by three at our first time out. Well, we talked about it right off the bat. Daniel Bacho and Mark Adams goes right to him to get him going. And there's the jumper right there, made good by the freshman Isaacs. Going to be a good one here tonight in Lubbock. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Cricket is easy, it's affordable. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Feels like a change is coming. UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. The Big 12 Big East battle continues tonight in Lubbock, Texas Tech, the 9-6 lead over Georgetown as we welcome you inside. Ted Emmerich along with former Oklahoma State guard Brendan Manzer. Daniel Bacho, his sophomore year with Texas Tech, he already looks like one of the breakout stars, not just in the Big 12, but across the country. Yeah, you, you know, when you have bigs, Ted, the first thing you want them to have is a motor. He showed that as a freshman, played 10 minutes a game a year ago, but now he's in an elite role. 
He's been a really a pleasant surprise for Mark Adams. He, they knew that he would be good. They didn't expect him to be this good in November, but he's talented. He's got uh, soft touch around the rim. He's moving great. He's 6'11", 235, and he is a force, no doubt. He's going to be big time in the Big 12. And he's already provided one of the moments of the college basketball season. This was against Louisville, second game in Maui. Looks like me against my five-year-old daughter on her nerve hoop, just erasing the shots. I mean, that's, that's not even fair. But look, I just mentioned it, the athleticism, the agility, the ability. I mean, he just basically goes and grabs that with two hands, avoids contact. He's such a coachable young man. You know, I mentioned 6'11", 235. He's had a full year with Darby Rich, the strength and conditioning coach here at Tech, who does a great job. His body has transformed. Just the eye check walking into the arena today and seeing him, you can tell that he's in a good place. Brandon Murray's pass deflected by Tyson. will stay with Georgetown, 12 to shoot. Mark Adams says that Bacho is the most improved player he has seen in his seven years in Lubbock. Now they think Daniel Bacho is a legitimate NBA prospect. You see Coach Adams right there. And what a great job, seamless transition when Chris Beard left to go to Texas and the trust that Kirby Hokut had in Mark Adams. Murray late in the shot clock, offensive foul. So it's kind of when you play tech, going back to that defense, it's it's a really tough balance because the first four or five minutes, Georgetown moved the ball well, Ted, but you're going to have very few opportunities to get to the rim. So you're going to have to make jumpers, right? But that possession was stagnant, stayed on a side, and there's no way you're going to get a good look if you don't move it. Bacho cleaning up the mess left from Davion Harmon. So a couple of dunks for Bacho. Here in the first six minutes. And that was a concern for Patrick Ewing coming into tonight was Texas Tech, their ability and their conditioned minds to hit the glass. Spears with the swish for Georgetown. His first basket averaging 17 points in his first year coming over from Duquesne. Yeah, we talked about the 25 points that Jay Heath had on Saturday. Spears had 20 himself. Just as important, he had six assists, no turnovers. So, again, these, these are three playmaking guards that Patrick Ewing has. Tyson looking for an outlet and a three-second call. So, Texas Tech with the turnover. Again, the pieces are there for Georgetown. Seven transfers from six different conferences and a couple of freshmen. And by the way, Patrick Ewing has an entirely new staff as well. Brought in Kevin Nickelberry from LSU, Pat Baldwin, the former head coach at Milwaukee. They're just trying to U-turn this thing after posting just six wins a year ago. Bryson Mazzone, one of those transfers from South Carolina upstate in the Big South with the bucket. And a great job of Heath. Georgetown able to get it to the middle of the floor there. Nice drive. Drew the help up the floor. You get an easy lay-in. Here's Harmon back in his home state of Texas from Denton, just north of Dallas. Harmon pulls the trigger. In and out. And a cook vacuums it in for Georgetown. Tyson with another deflection for Texas Tech. Mark Adams said it at shoot around today. He's been pleasantly surprised with the defense that Jalen Tyson has been playing here early on. Tyson has the length in the backcourt to really affect things at that end of the floor. Yes, 6'7". You, you mentioned the length. And nobody's going to teach defense and emphasize it any better than Mark Adams. And he is still one of those coaches. If you don't defend, you're not going to get your minutes. It's, it's this end of the floor that's the priority for him and his teams. Kick it out. Wayne Bristol Jr. knocks down the three. Bristol had his first start of the season Saturday against UMBC. He's now 5 of 10 from long range this year. And a guy that had a reputation at Howard is being able to knock those down. Bacho on the interior. Too much on it. Georgetown has scored seven in a row. 
Oh, too much on that pass. And here is Bacho running down the floor. And Tyson puts it home to tie it up. How about Bacho leading the break? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Ted. Even though he missed the bunny right there, I mean, that's 6'11", 235, just gliding down that left-hand side of the floor. Nice job of Tyson cleaning it up, though. Spears off target. Mark Adams wants to get Jalen Tyson more touches at this end. Instead, it's Bacho for three. He hits. Daniel Bacho, three for three from the outside this year. Mazzone trying to answer, and he does. I'll tell you what, Georgetown. Ted starting to get comfortable. They're moving the ball around the perimeter, kind of fought Texas Tech's effort defensively off in that first four or five minutes. Oh, Banner in and out. Bacho chases it down, trying to bounce it off Heath, and it's successful. Now the hustle play from Daniel Bacho. The Bacho breakout is on. I'm telling you, there's a reason we've been bragging on him since tip. As you mentioned, Ted, high and soft right there from long range. He's gonna have to come out and guard that as well. It's very rare that you find a community that provides the level of care for the rest of your life that Carolon does. There are unlimited activities and events and uh, different areas of interest that Carillon offers. My friends ask me about Carillon all the time and I have one thing that I say, I absolutely love it. As we face unforeseen challenges and experience dramatic changes in our daily lives, we are thankful to live in a community where people come together in times of need. We're thankful for the heroes who are willing to risk their lives to save ours. And we're thankful for our neighbors who continue to show up every day and provide the vital services that keep us going. To all of you who help Lubbock stay strong and healthy, thank you. Old Trapper Beefs, last bag. You know there's plenty for both of you. Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Midway first half in Lubbock, Georgetown, four of seven from three, tied up with Texas Tech at 16. Ted Emmerich, Brendan Manzer with you. We mentioned Daniel Bacho. His play early on has been so critical for Texas Tech because this guy is not available yet. Fardaz Amak. The transfer from Utah Valley, former WAC Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Mark Adams said today there's no firm timeline for when AMAC will return. They are hoping 
by the start of Big 12 conference play at the end of the month, early January. Yeah, and they'll be conservative. You don't want to rush that because I can't even, I mean, it's hard to imagine what he's going to add to an already good basketball team. But he was one of the most coveted players coming out of the transfer portal. Second in the country nationally in rebounding behind Oscar Shibway of Kentucky. So he too, speaking of bigs that can knock down threes. Yes. Shot 43% from three-point range a year ago. So that's a huge piece in many ways that Tech will get at some point. Offensive foul on K.J. Allen. Amac recovering from a broken foot. He's still on the scooter and his foot still in a cast. You can see him top of your picture at the end of the bench. Murray got it back. Georgetown has made five of their last six shots from the floor. Shot clock at five. Spears guarded by Harmon. Got to go. Spears is in trouble. Harmon nabs it. And Harmon lays it in with the offhand at the other end. Well, that last time out, Ted, I can promise you there was a do-better speech from Mark Adams defensively. Notice when Georgetown was moving the ball, or is moving it now, Tech is right there. They got complacent for a couple minutes, and then you get Harmon, who's terrific on the ball, being able to steal it. Here he goes again. Harmon slows it up this time. Maybe on Harmon, his first two years at Oklahoma, last year at Oregon for a team that went to the NIT, and now back in the Big 12 with Tech. Ten to shoot. Williams, the Gardner Webb transfer with the floater. He's supposed to give Texas Tech a little bit of a scoring punch off the bench. Well, good movement. It was crisp. Drives it right there and scores. You're talking about a guy that was second team All Big South a year ago. Spears for three. An air ball. And it's Texas Tech ball. Oh, when you play Tech against their pressure, you have to take care of the basketball. And there's Harmon, gets his hands in there. Tech did a nice job keeping him in the double team and not fouling. Back-to-back, -back, well, I take that. That's three straight possessions now where George Tun has turned the basketball over. Patrick, you're really concerned about that in this building tonight. You know, Texas Tech a year ago led the nation in Ken Palm's defensive efficiency. In fact, with Mark Adams running this defense when he was an assistant, of course, last year as the head coach, look at these rankings in Ken Palm's defensive metric. Top 20 every single year. This year, they're at 16. They're sound. Said they pressure, yet there's containment. And then... If by happenstance, you're able to get an angle and drive it. The rotation is terrific. And so they are so good defensively. And as we said, you don't you don't guard, you don't play. Here's that trap. They don't foul. Harmon gets his hands in there. And that's an easy one. Here's another look. See how Harmon and Allen, K.J. Allen, no, not to foul. He's a dead duck that far from the basket. Even if you don't steal it, Ted, he's got to get out of that trap against that pressure. So knowledgeable defenders taught by a knowledgeable defensive coach. 11 to shoot for Georgetown out of the timeout. Murray had the first basket for Georgetown. Has not scored since. Oh, what the? How about the step back? Bacho <laughs> fell down and Murray with the shot. He was on the SEC All-Freshman team a year ago at LSU. Yeah, 32 starts there, and Coach Ewing talked about how he's like the old-school Big East guard with size and athleticism at 6'5". Bacho tried the play that worked for him earlier. It didn't this time. Murray with a floater now. Back-to-back -back buckets for Brandon Murray. So important that he is back in the lineup for the Hoyas. One of the things I like about these three guards in the perimeter, they don't always settle for the three, Ted. They do a good job of getting downhill. Demorian and Williams with the drive. Forget about the follow stuff by Bacho. Foul is called against Georgetown, sending us to an official timeout. We are tied at 20 in the Big 12 Big East battle.
change is coming. UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. Well, forget returning to glory. How about just being competitive in the Big East again? If Georgetown is going to do that, this triumvirate of guards is going to help them get there. Primo Spears, Brandon Murray, Jay Heath, all in their first year with the Hoyas. They are the catalysts for this team. And all of them can playmake. And when you say playmake, that means go get a bucket if you need it. Go get some kind of shot late in a shot clock when your offense breaks down. They share it pretty well. You, know, you see four and a half assists for Spears. Murray in his five games, see him right there. He's averaging four and a half assists. So one thing to keep in mind, those three have only played three games together this year so far. I, I think they need a stretch of games. Hopefully, knock on wood, they all stay healthy in December. And I think going in the Big East, I mean, you've seen it glimpses already tonight when they're all clicking, that ball's moving, the, even Tech as good as they are defensively trying to catch up to those guys. That's what Patrick Ewing wants, and certainly over time, I think they're going to be really tough to handle. Now, Murray missed the previous two games with a hip injury as Demarion Williams nails both free throws to give Texas Tech the lead. Jay Heath missed the first two games because he was seeking his waiver as a double transfer. Spent his first couple of years at Boston College, last year at Arizona State. Davion Harmon needed the same thing from the NCAA as a two-time transfer at Texas Tech. Skip pass, a cook, a cook. He is a threat from long range. And around and out. Harmon leaving it for Isaacs. Give it to him, his second three. Now Harmon, I think here at Tech, at least the early going, showing the ability to set up his teammates. Through two years at Oklahoma and one at Oregon, as a guard, a primary bar, he only averaged two assists a game. He's averaging over four thus far for Tech. Harmon, the floater now. His father, Dion, says, I have not seen Davion this happy in a long time. He feels right at home at Texas Tech. Well, you talk to the staff as we did today. I asked multiple people, how, how has he been? Everybody had the same comment, Ted. His countenance is great. His demeanor is great. The other players are feeding off his positive energy. And Mark Adams said it earlier today at shoot-around. He's been better than we even thought, and we had high expectations for Harmon. And, and I think what it was was defensively. I mean, he's always been pretty good on the ball, but he's been really good away from the ball as well. In fact, Mark Adams said right now he's their best perimeter fender, and that's high praise, especially for somebody in their first year, you know, playing for a guy like Mark Adams. So you, you come in right off the bat, and that three years of experience, you know, he understands how important it is that end of the floor at this level ball. Foul called against Primo Spears. Defending on the perimeter. And that's his second. Harmon says he missed his family out in the Pacific Northwest. Texas Tech turns it over as Isaacs was looking for Bacho. Spears the drive and kick. Nice closeout by Harmon. Did not allow any airspace to Jay Heath. Now Spears against the big Bacho. Swing it to a cook. Texas Tech has scored the last seven points. Under six to play here in the first half in Lubbock. Bacho on the drive at 6-11 against Wahab and the lefty hook. Daniel Bacho has nine points. And I think Coach Ewing will and should get a timeout right here. Tech has turned up the defense since that under-12 media timeout. There's been a clear difference in them defensively. And then Daniel Bacho continues to make you and I look good, Ted. Bragged on him from the tip 
right there sees an isolated situation skilled enough to put himself in position and a nice job of going over that right shoulder it's hard to recognize daniel bacho this year if you watched him last year there would be flashes here and there i remember a game against tennessee in new york uh, that overtime game that was played in the 50s and mark adams compared him to Tariq owens from the team that went to the final four but look at the numbers from last year remember there's bryson williams yeah. there's marcus santos silva there's kevin o'banner in the front court and this year with bryson williams now a pro in the g league in the clippers organization there is room there is a role for daniel bacho to thrive yeah it is just waiting your turn right and you know he was part of the rotation last year and, and he played enough meaningful and quality minutes to get a taste and understand what it takes hey and like all of us in anything in life once you've been through something once you should have a better feel of what to expect and i think even as little as he played last year it was at least at least fairly consistent in his minutes certainly helped him leading into this year Keep trying the baseline. Bacho forced him outside. Under four to shoot. Jump stop from Spears. Harmon with another strip. Oh, Banner got pushed by Murray, and that's number two on Brandon Murray. Boy, the defense has been absolutely stifling, sound, aggressive. And on the drive right there, there were three Tech players who rotated over to protect the basket. O'Banner working against a Cook. It's an 11 to nothing run for the Red Raiders. So Tech's getting the stops, and look where the shots are coming from on the offensive end, Ted. They're, they're coming towards the rim, higher percentage, and they're converting. Heath under 10 to shoot. Now Murray, wild shot. Georgetown seems to be getting impatient at this end. Tyson all alone for read. the triple. And what a find by Isaacs. What a read right there by Isaacs. Well, how many times have you seen a young player in that situation when Bacho rolled they leave their feet and realize that's not the play He played off two feet. That's why he was able to skip Bacho and throw it on that other side 14 in a row from Texas Tech Isaacs looking to a cutting Bacho and it's out of bounds Pop Isaacs, the freshman from Las Vegas, given name is Richard. He had hip surgery in early June, did not practice until September 28th. It's really remarkable what he's doing in the first month of the season with no work being done in the summer. Georgetown hasn't scored in almost five minutes. The drought rolls on. Tyson the steal. Robert Jennings lost the handle but collected it. Yeah, you alluded to it, Ted, recently. Getting impatient, trying to hit a home run right there. Georgetown did offensively. Oh, Jennings, nice bounce pass to Kevin O'Banner for the slam. 16 unanswered for Texas Tech. Mazzone quiets the crowd with a three. The first points in five plus minutes for Georgetown. Did you see how quick O'Banner went up to dunk that? Because he knew a cook, a shot blocker, was right behind him. That's timeout. That's scouting report. I'll watch this right there. He knows a cook. Watch how quick he goes up. Boom. Right there. That's a six-year guy in O'Banner. Tech rolling right now.
change is coming. UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Yeah. All right, you're gonna have. We're gonna have. Three minutes to play, first half in Lubbock, Texas Tech on the strength of a 16-0 run. Up 36-23 over Georgetown. Hoya shooting just 38%. Hit four threes early on, but Texas Tech has started to clamp down on Georgetown. Daniel Bacho leads Tech with nine points to go with five rebounds. And a little zone right here from Georgetown coming out of that timeout. Damarian Williams, jumper off target. Texas Tech had made eight shots in a row. Pass inside to a cook, deflected and stolen. It's the no middle defense for a reason, right? Well, Cook a Cook had Harmon matched up with him inside, so the advantage was there. But when the lob was made, a, a Cook released Harmon got to hold him there until that ball's above your head. It released him too early, and that's what caused the turnover. Harmon, air ball. Bacho is right there for the stop. Now in double figures. Just following the flight of the ball right there. Spears guarded by Tyson. The zone too strong and Tyson skies for the board under two to play in the first half Tyson a quick trigger got it it's a three I absolutely love what Harmon is doing right now for tech I alluded to it earlier not just the score, he's trying to set up teammates. He has multiple times looked to draw help so he could create. Murray responds with a triple for Georgetown. In his return to action from the hip injury, Murray with 10 points. Well, if there's any way Georgetown, Ted, could get a couple of stops here and somehow find a way to score the basket, and get it down to 10 or 12 and regroup with a tad bit of momentum, that would serve them well going into halftime. Georgetown stays in this zone. Five to shoot. Tyson walked. There's Tyson. Great job going up with two hands. And, and here's Harmon. Look, surveying the floor, drives to help. That's an easy play. That's just a simple play. And that's all Harmon needed to do. Tyson gets the rebound, feels that right hand side, and Harmon, a great job of finding him in rhythm. Mark Adams wanted Tyson to get more shots. Well, he's four or five from the field, 10 points so far. Player with star <laughs> potential. And how about the conversation with yeah, Adams? You, you, you always know a player's in a really good state of mind when he puts his arm around the coach like that. I got you. That that was you and Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State, right? All the time. Yeah, usually because I was coming out of the game and he was uh, thinking I need to get some better players in so we don't lose this lead. <laughs> yeah, big, big country Bryant Reeves got to put his arm around Eddie Sutton. Yeah, but yeah. Not you. Now you're talking. Murray. It's not there. Bacho with his seventh rebound to go with 11 points. The timeout with 36 seconds to go in the half. Texas Tech calling time. A 15-point lead for the Red Raiders at home, where they have won 24 in a row since their last loss, February of 2021, against West Virginia. This was a preseason top 25 team, moved up to 21st in the country before losing two of three games at the Maui Invitational. Completely different team, Brendan, from last year when they went to the Sweet 16, 
Eight of their top nine scorers are gone, including first team all Big 12 pick Bryson Williams. And you think, well, okay, it's time to rebuild. But you don't rebuild in college basketball, and you don't rebuild here at Texas Tech. You just reload. Well, a couple things. I think Mark Adams history and experience as a junior college basketball coach where you have quick turnarounds those are two-year schools has helped him a little bit in this day and age that we have in major college certainly with the portal but in the replacements though it wasn't all about the portal they got a couple of those guys obviously but they have four freshmen that they really like and he said to us we wouldn't have signed four freshmen but we were able to sign four really good freshmen so a nice mixture of veterans and young guys. Including this guy, Pop Isaacs, who was an ESPN 100 recruit. About an 11 second difference between the clocks. Damarian Williams, shut off. Walton, nice feed. Oh, Banner, time ran out. A cook was there defensively, and it's a shot clock violation. And, and a great job of a cook not taking the bait. Multiple pump fakes by O'Banner. And they talked about that, Texas Tech did, in shoot around. Not just on the interior, but on the perimeter. They felt like they could pump fake and get Georgetown off their feet. A cook right there, great job holding his ground and terrific defensive play. So 10 seconds left in the half and an opportunity for Georgetown. Clock starts when Murray picks it up. Mazzone got Williams off his feet. Three ball is short. Three seconds. Bacho up the floor. Spears got his hands on it. And that brings us to halftime. Texas Tech's first game in. And then now he's showing the ability to knock down the three. Three for three on the season. Look at the skill. That's 6'11. Gets himself in position. Plays off two feet. Goes over that right shoulder. And, and then here's an easy one for him. He was terrific. Ted in the first half, to say the least. And Pop Isaacs, the freshman, contributing as well. You know, I talked to uh, special assistant, the head coach, Sean Sutton, this afternoon, and the first freshman he talked about was Isaacs. He said he's really good. The game is slow to him already, and he showed that the first half. Brandon Murray leads Georgetown with 10 points in his return from injury. Yeah, great to see him back and hasn't missed a beat. Maybe concerned about his fatigue in the second half. Georgetown has a short bench, but... Great to see him out there. And they were flowing early offensively, but defensively, that under 12 timeout, Ted, Mark Adams talked to his team, and they put the clamps on Georgetown defensively. And you see that 16-0 run, that's when it started. 15-point game, and Texas Tech opens the second half with a takeaway. Harmon, though, rejected by Murray. Out of bounds, and it'll stay at this end. Last touched by Georgetown. Yeah, this game was 20 all about midway through the first half. And the Red Raiders went on a 16 0 burst to take control. Georgetown shot 36% in that first half. Texas Tech shot 57%. You know, Georgetown, to close out the first half, went to this zone right here. And it did slow down Tech a little bit. They started here the second half. There's Harmon. What, what I was going to say is, now you're 18 down. And at some point, maybe soon here in the second half, you have to get out of that because of the deficit. Get back to man-to-man. -man. Largest lead of the game for Tech. Inside, Caduce Wahab. Oh, lost it on the way up. Recovered by Georgetown. Tyson the deflection, and he runs it down. Tyson for three. Yes! Jalen Tyson with 13. And an early second half timeout for Georgetown. Tyson with the hustle, and he caps it off with the shot making. Texas Tech up by 21.
UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. Jalen Tyson with the steal and the triple, forcing the Hoyas timeout. Uh, mentioned, Brendan, this is a totally different team. Texas Tech now, 10 newcomers, five transfers, five freshmen, really a new coaching staff under Mark Adams as well. Movement there in the offseason. The constant is Adams. The constant is the culture that he helps create. So you lose eight of your nine top scores from a Sweet 16 team, and they have a long way to go. They're, they're not that yet. But, I mean, they keep defending like this. They're on the way. The, the culture is the defensive side of it, and to play it at the level Texas Tech does, first of all, you have to have high, high intensity and buy-in. And they have that. And regardless of who is on your roster, that's the way they're going to coach these guys. And I'll tell you what, you talked about the fans. This is a pretty good non-conference crowd in November. The fans feel that, the intensity, and with great defense comes toughness. And fans love that and lo love to be a part of it, and they can feel it. And uh, it's funny, Mark Adams always sandbags. I goes, well, I don't know. We, I don't we, I hope we play okay. But I'm he, sick to my stomach thinking yeah, about yeah, Georgetown. I'm, I'm, and I, and I told him today, I said, you're a sandbagger. I bet you guys play well. Spears to the corner. Mazzone off the up fake. And the long two goes for Bryson Mazzone, who is in double figures with 10. Now, I asked Mark Adams at shoot around, so how has practice been in the last week since the two losses in Maui. He said, well, it's been intense. It's like, when is it not intense when Mark Adams is coaching right. a practice? Isaacs missed the floater. Here comes Georgetown. Spears out to Mazzone. This time for three. Give it to him. Well, what a great find by Primo Spears right there. And you get Mazzone, who just knocked down the jumper, the previous half-court possession, catching it from three right there in rhythm. The zone was just four of 24 from three in the first seven games. He's three of six tonight. But he's a 39% shooter la last year and, and made 71 threes. So it's there. It just hasn't been there yet this season. So this is a positive to go down. Here's a court vision. You can always draw the help on tech, even in transition. That's a great find by Spears. The zone and rhythm from that court. A thousand career points. In his four years at USC Upstate. Oh, he leaning. It's an offensive foul. Isaacs, the freshman, stepping in front. That's why a freshman's in the starting lineup right there. Again, talked about his offensive game where it's slow to him. Doesn't get sped up too much for a young guy. And they're right there. That's just terrific position defense. Poyas apply pressure. Harmon navigates through it. Tyson, the spin, and with the left hand, he puts it home. Jalen Tyson with 15. And what he, Mark Adams talked to you and I today about what do you want out of Tyson? He said a little more offense. The right kind of shots, but we want him to be aggressive because it's in there. He's got an extra notch or two to his offensive game, and he's showing it here tonight. Out on the perimeter, he stepped out, a turnover by Georgetown. Now, Jalen Tyson has the potential to be an all Big 12 player at the very least. Top 30 player in the ESPN 100 coming out of high school in 2021. Just eight games last year with Texas before transferring to Texas Tech at the semester break. He was on the scout team the rest of the season. That was pretty beneficial for him. Isaacs missed everything. Mazzone might have gotten a piece of it. Spears in transition. Oh, Bocho erases it. 
A Bacho block party. He needed only one hand that time. He used two in mount. <laughs> Bacho sets the screen for Isaacs. Tyson, three ball. Jalen Tyson, white hot from deep, four for four. You could tell when he came up, when he came off of that right there, that he was going to catch and shoot that in rhythm. And to elaborate more on Tyson, you know, he's got good size, six seven. He's athletic, and he's, he's really a three-level score. Murray goes glass for two. But yes, Daniel Bacho, sophomore, Jalen Tyson, sophomore, the building blocks for Texas Tech in this new team after yet again making the second weekend of the NCAA tournament last year. Harmon, the veteran, he goes off the window for two. A tough finish from Harmon. Yeah, that's the second time tonight when he's gotten downhill to the paint where he's been able to absorb a little contact and finish with that off right hand. Heath left it short. Tyson in transition for Texas Tech. He's got 18 to lead all scorers. Cut off by Mazzone. And stay here, timeout. Daniel Bacho will eat you alive. The rejection of Primo Spears, it's Texas Tech by 21. in the fact that we were the only university to participate in a football bowl game, the men's basketball tournament, as well as the NCAA baseball tournament. The only school in the state of Texas. When you come to West Texas, folks, saddle up. You're going to go on a wild ride. Living in Lubbock is about to get even better. You see, electricity is about to be deregulated which means you'll have more power over who provides your power. And one of those choices will be Reliant. We've been providing electricity to Texans for over 20 years, and we're excited to make new neighbors right here. We look forward to powering the Lubbock community and being part of this great city. Reliant, that's power your way. The Texas Tech Alumni Association stands stronger than ever before because of the thousands of alumni who are committed to our great university. We began with our first graduating class in 1927, and nearly a century later, we continue to serve Texas Tech through programs, services, and scholarships for all of our loud and proud Red Raiders. We appreciate our loyal alumni for making a difference. If you're not a member, consider being a part of our story into the next century. Belong today. You're one of us. Our story started in 1996, and it continues because of you, our customers, our communities, and our neighbors. We are proud to be a small part of your success. But where does your story start? Where do you want to go? Whether starting a business, saving for the future, or launching your ideas to the next level, we want to help you take your first steps towards something big. Call or email one of our bankers today. We see potential, ideas, innovation, growth everywhere. Texas Tech freshman guard Pop Isaacs. Mark Adams loves his energy and enthusiasm. So how did he get his name? That given name is Richard. His dad's name is Richard, and he was nicknamed Pop by his dad because as a toddler, he would dribble a basketball in the kitchen non-stop. Pop, 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 pop. That doesn't get old. No, it doesn't get old. 
<laughs> You'd let your daughter do that, wouldn't you? It happens all the time, Brendan. We're, she is going to be in the ESPN uh, Hoop Girls rankings <laughs> before long, trust me. Just like Pop Isaacs turned out to be in the ESPN 100. Five to shoot here. Kevin O'Banner couldn't lay it in. Ball loose, scooped up by a cook, a cook. Pull up from Primo Spears. And Bacho closes out. I tell you what, even in transition, Tech does such a great job of sprinting back. And, and the first thing they do, which is the right thing, is they protect the basket first. I mean, they don't give you any angles. Oh, Tyson with the move. Daniel Bacho with the follow stuff. Bacho with 13 points and 10 rebounds. His second career double-double, his first, came in the season opener against Northwestern State. Mazzone trains it for Georgetown. He has given the Hoyas a lift off the bench. Yeah, and, and something positive here tonight so far, even though the Hoyas down 21 right here, is Mazzone starting to make some jumpers. He'll complement those three more well-known perimeter players. Here's that Bacho follow-up. So, screen you turn the corner a cook has to go help and contest and that frees up a bacho perfect angle right here and if you're spears somehow some way you got to be cognizant and aware when that happens you got to get in front of bacho and try to block him off even though there's a size differential or he would do exactly what he just did well, banner at the line after the foul on a cook a bacho from paris France, not Texas, Brendan. I know you were wondering. <laughs> Spent his first year at Arizona. Didn't play. Had a knee injury. Also dealt with illness. Joins Texas Tech. Reserve for the team that went to the Sweet 16 a year ago. And now he is a new star in the Big 12. Just a few weeks into the season. Here's Damarian Williams. Haven't seen much of Elijah Fisher tonight, the five-star freshman from Toronto. And just as we say that, he turns it over with the travel. Now, Fisher, consensus top 25 player in the country. That's the five-star rating. Reclassified so that he could come to Tech this year. Really talented. There's some info on him right there. Team Canada at the Under-19 World Cup. Obvious comment, tremendous upside, but he's he is really still getting acclimated. Isaacs has been acclimated more quickly, but just think when Fisher gets going, how good that duo is going to be together. Harmon downhill and with the offhand, he banks it home. He wanted the foul on the zone, but he'll take the basket. He, he's tough, Ted, because he's burst of speed comes with the left hand right but then he can cross back over and get to the right so he's not predictable in that way see that the crossover the burst of speed left to right gets the angle has great body control and again absorbs contact and able to finish softly Harmon with 11 tonight remember the three steals in the first half that helped energize Texas Tech what a pickup he has been in the portal coming from Oregon. And another steal for Tech. It's the freshman Robert Jennings. Out to Damarian Williams. Catch and shoot. Denver Anglin, the freshman from Montclair, New Jersey, considered one of the best shooters in the class of 2022. He was an ESPN 100 prospect. That'll certainly put a hop in his step. You're a freshman to play in an environment like that and able to knock down a shot. It was a nice recruiting win for Georgetown, picking the Hoyas over UConn, Xavier, Providence, and Notre Dame, among others. Oh, Bacho, the bounce pass, and Fisher is fouled. Daniel Bacho showing off the full skill set tonight. The double-double for Texas Tech which leads by 19.
people who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. I love how. C282. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. For cancer research, and listen, we know times are tough, but if you are considering end of year giving here it is v.org slash donate we can tell you that every single dollar from your do donation goes directly to cancer research we know about dickie v's fight recently brendan and all the great work he has done not just during v week but year round you think about his gala in florida the money that he has raised for cancer research, and of course, Dickie V's good friend who inspired it all. And honestly, any time that speech is shown from Jimmy V, like it's stop down, stop everything you're doing, inspiring every single time. I was going to say the same thing, and you know, a lot of us have seen it 30 times, but you never change, you're never not moved. One of the most powerful speeches or addresses ever literally, literally and the impact it's made you mentioned uh, Dickie V I mean he was there with coach Valvano from day one um, after his passing and and supporting this cause so, so yeah no doubt I mean uh, it's great to see those guys you know take take their platform or being well known and well liked and influential to promote and influence the Jimmy V Foundation just cancer in general in the fight against it. Texas Tech by 17 here in Lubbock where they've won 24 straight games. Ted Emmerich, Brendan Manzer, our entire crew. Bryson Mazzone with his fourth three of the night. He leads Georgetown with 18 off the bench. Jalen Tyson with 18 for Texas Tech. And now Demarian Williams with the basket on the inside. From Phoenix, a transfer from Gardner-Webb in the Big South. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, Georgetown right there was having a good defensive possession. And just a breakdown late. Way too easy on that drive right there from Tech. It's a tie up. Texas Tech ball with the arrow. And here you are right there. Yeah, slow to rotate. That was zone right there. 
And what you hope if you're at Georgetown, it's, it's a long way to go against a really good team that defends well on the road, tough environment, tough non-conference environment, no doubt. But if you're Patrick Ewing, Coach Ewing, you want to see you guys continue to fight, get some stops defensively, make some kind of run. Dip into this. And see, uh, see what you can make up. In the very least, get some positive things for your ball club once you leave Lubbock. Stoppage here. Might be some clock issue. Patrick Ewing said yesterday, are we going to put our heads down and get the job done? Are we going to be like rats and run off a sinking ship? A loss to American University, Georgetown, should never do that. It's been 40 years since Georgetown lost to American across town. And that's what happened last Wednesday. There is firepower on this team, but it is going to take time for this group to gel. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt, you know, and, and I mention it all the time. You can tell certain things by watching them television, but when you see it in person, you get a different perspective. There are pieces here. And one thing to keep in mind, too, I mean, he revamped the whole roster. And there's talent here, but it takes it takes time. I mean, shoot, back in the day when you actually had the majority of your team returning, it was hard to be good in November. I mean, it's especially hard this day and age. And, you know, I always enjoy busy with him. He's always gracious. And one thing is certain. He loves Georgetown, what it did for him personally, uh, the relationships he has there, and he loves coaching. I mean, he wants he wants to help these guys get better and improve, and, and hopefully they can do that as the season pro progresses. It's definitely far better shape than they were a year ago. Primo Spears cashes in with the three-point play. Midway mark, second half. Pressure from Georgetown. Texas Tech moves it across. Bacho almost lost it. Oh, Banner flips it up. Bacho with the tip in. Oh, was it in the cylinder? It sure was. It won't count. Offensive basket interference against Daniel Bacho. And a timeout call. Let's watch it. Bacho tried to kind of watch him kind of hesitate right there. It's closer than I thought. Yeah, he did. Bacho did a great job, though. Either way, he just got away. It's right there. Good timing. Maybe not off. Outside this thing. It's Zio you know, looking at O'Banner's face. He's like, I can't believe I missed that. And for O'Banner, it's been a quiet night offensively. Just seven points. He had come in with five straight games scoring in double figures in fact at a season high 19 against ohio state in maui last wednesday but don't worry daniel bacho is here to pick up the slack second career double double 13 points and 10 rebounds 13 points on six of eight from the floor so if you go back to the ohio state game 21 points on seven to ten shooting so that's 34 points on 18 field goal attempts. So he's obviously finishing. He's also getting himself to the line. Spears with a floater, had the three-point play a moment ago, and now the bucket here. Primo Spears had missed five of his first six shots from the field. He and Jay Heath have both struggled offensively. And so Georgetown right now, it's 14, coming near the under eight. Can they get a couple stops here? Get it inside 10. Right on cue, the steal. Bradley is a whirl. Off the mark, but a foul against Damarian Williams. Georgetown isn't done yet. Well, this world did a nice job right there. I mean, the, the pass up to four was at his feet. He's able to corral it, and then he kind of slows down and uses his body. Unconventional transition opportunity there but did a nice job the big fella kind of gathering himself and showing a little uh, fluidity as a world transferred from lsu just like brandon murray coach on that staff in baton rouge kevin nickelberry now on staff at georgetown these are the first free throw attempts of the season for as a world 
who didn't play much for LSU last year. Just seven games and one game in SEC play. Can Harmon get through this trap? He's got to call a timeout. All right. That's, I mean, it's exactly what you want to see. We talked about it a little while ago when it was 62-43. If you're, if you're Patrick Ewing and Georgetown, let's keep fighting. Let's get some stops. Let's put ourselves in position to make it interesting. Great trap right there. Texas Tech was not ready for it, a poor execution anyway. You get the smaller Harmon in that trap. He has to call timeout. It was a 23-point lead for Texas Tech at the 13-43 mark. Georgetown has cut it to 12. They've scored seven in a row here. I'm sure they'll bring pressure here because you had the ball in bounds. You're going to have a spot throw in at the corner. Tough spot to enter it offensively for Tech right here. So expect more pressure from the Hoyas. Damarian Williams to inbound for Texas Tech. Harmon wants it. Oh, Heath with the contact and the whistle blows. That's number two on Heath. Harmon again fighting and gives it right back to Williams and Georgetown backs off. Too tall for O'Banner and an easy steal for Brandon Murray. Murray down the lane, deflected by Bacho. And Georgetown grabs it right back. Heath just three points after 25 on Saturday, and Heath with the floater. It's a 10 point game. What a great two man play right there from the Hoyas. Tech's gotten stagnant here, Ted, on that offensive end. Jalen Tyson not on the floor. Ezzaruro, the rejection on Harmon. Out of bounds with 10 to shoot. I'll tell you what, not many teams have this many rim protectors like Georgetown. Ezzaruro really given great energy off the bench, made plays at both ends of the floor. It's good to see from the LSU transfer. Here's Harmon, guarded by fellow two-time transfer, Jay Heath. Isaac's trying to step back over Spears. It's an air ball. Spears on the break, the Euro. Isaac's the collision and a foul. Pop Isaac's with his first personal. Georgetown down by 23 earlier in the second half has made it a 10-point game here in Lubbock. People who come to Cricket, stay with Cricket. I love how...
people who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Cricket is easy, it's affordable. UFC 282. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. Georgetown has made it a game again. Down by 15 at half, down by 23 at one point in the second half. They've scored the last nine points. And the margin is 10 with under eight to play. Now, the story for Georgetown this year, especially in their losses to Loyola Marymount and American, have been strong first half and then giving up big leads. Well, tonight, flip that script, Brendan. They have outscored Tech by five here in the second half. I think Coach Ewing would like to put two good halves together, but you know, I think if you're going to choose... It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And they have a real opportunity here. And we've kind of talked about it. If they can win these next four minutes, the math tells you it'll be inside 10 going down the stretch. Psychologically, that's big. On the other side of it, you see full court pressure right here. Coach Adams is going to be talking about the defensive end. I think when Tech has defended with intensity at a high level, their decisions on the offensive end have been better. And Texas Tech right on cue, turns it over. Pass offline intended for Bacho, and Mark Adams sends Jalen Tyson back in. Tyson with a team high 18. He's hit all four of his threes. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see Tyson right away out of the last time. Right, now you have Isaacs, Tyson, and Harmon out there. You've got the starting five on the floor yeah, for Texas Tech. And more importantly, handling the basketball and making the decisions out front against half-court and full-court pressure. Tyson, the challenge, it didn't matter for Primo Spears. Georgetown is down by six. Tell you what, isn't momentum interesting? I mean, it is completely switched. 13 unanswered points for the Hoyas. 10 to shoot for Tech. Oh, Banner gives it back to Isaacs. Now Harmon, guarded by Spears. Oh, from the logo. Thought that shot grazed the rim. No matter, shot clock violation. So Georgetown defensively have just kept everything in front. But they've, they've been solid. They haven't been leaving their feet. And Texas has helped play into that, Texas Tech, by just being stagnant on the offensive end. Murray with the jumper. The run continues for the Hoyas. They are down by four. This was a 23-point game with just under 14 minutes to go. Tyson from the corner, air ball. Spears comes out with it. Two on two. Feeding Murray for the basket. Georgetown trails by two. Tech, Ted, they, they have to get Bacho involved. They got to get him touches. When he touches it, no matter where it is, it puts a natural pressure on Georgetown's defense. Harmon the floater. Oh, Batro mistimed his jump. Out of bounds to Georgetown. Under six to play. And somehow Georgetown can tie it or take the lead here. Patrick Ewing's team has scored 17 unanswered. It's an extended 20 to 2 run. They have made their last 10 shots from the field. And right now, I'm not seeing anybody from Tech grab their teammates and As say, a let's world. go. Foul is called. It's against O'Banner. Called on the floor. It's the sixth team foul against Texas Tech. The next one would put Georgetown at the line, or did they say it's in the act of shooting? 
Looks like two shots for Ezawuro. The initial call I saw from Kip Kissinger was on the floor. But two free throws for Ezawuro. And he can tie the game with his next one. Ted, what I was going to say is, is the body language for Tech. There's all five of those guys. Their shoulders slumped out, right, out there right now. And a little bit of bewilderment and disbelief on their faces. Somebody's got to step up and O'Banner some of those veterans and say, hey, we're just fine. Got to start defending at a higher level. They've got to handle this pressure. And then once they do, Ted, they've got to get that ball moving on the offensive end. It's getting really, really stacked. You think of defensive intensity. You think of Texas Tech. We have seen that tonight for a good stretch. It has come from Georgetown in the last few minutes. How about as a whirl hitting the deck? And the whistle blows as Isaacs is upended. I'll tell you, Ezeworo has given them tremendous energy and a boost here this second half. The foul is on Ezeworo, his first. Now, Kadus Wahab didn't give Georgetown much in the first half. In fact, hasn't scored. As a result, we've seen a ton of Ezeworo here in the second. One point Texas Tech lead. Isaacs, the freshman, too strong. Loose ball, Heath with the rebound. And the Hoyas save it. A chance to go in front. Spears slashing in. Old Banner clears it for the Red Raiders. Five minutes remaining here in this Big 12, Big East battle. Ted, Bacho. Where is it? They're not utilizing him here in this stretch. Tyson. Blocking foul called against Spears before he put it up. Look, I, 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 Coach McGuire was here at halftime. It's, it's like not targeting one of your top receivers when they've had a terrific first half and the second half you go away from them, especially when you need a play. Because the thing with Bacho, you could put him about anywhere. He's skilled. He's a good passer. He doesn't turn it over. He makes good decisions. So it's just not about throwing him on the block and getting it in there. But when he touches it, it's at the heart of the defense, whether it's high post or down low somewhere. Here is a touch for Bacho. Oh, he almost lost it. It is a kick ball against Spears and will stay with Texas Tech. Back to Isaacs, circling up, and Isaacs puts it home. Big basket for Texas Tech. Their first in more than six minutes. Ten to shoot for Spears. Step back over old Banner. Air ball. Four possessions for Georgetown in this stretch right there. there he is. Isaac Baccio on the roll. <laughs> Daniel Baccio inside. Texas Tech extends the lead. And you know, what do you do the next possession, Ted, offensively? You don't get something off the break. You, you get him a touch somehow. Now Bacho with the defensive play. He couldn't secure it. A cook, a cook out to Heath. And Heath couldn't bank it in. O'Banner pulls it down. And O'Banner is down. Foul called against Heath. Timeout in Lubbock with Texas Tech by five. More Bacho. Right, Ted? That's an easy one. High percentage. But Tech only up five.
Down 15 at half. Georgetown has fought their way back to a two-possession game. And here's why. It's a collective effort, Ted. There's Primo with the drive. Brandon Murray has been great today. Here's a jumper from him. Defensive stops into transition. Here's another Murray bucket. Bryson Mozone, though, Ted, has really been the guy. Eight points the first half, even though Georgetown was down by 15. Without that, you got a major hole. He's throwing another 10 together. He's a guy that came in as a score, 16 points a game last year, but hasn't had a breakout game. This is it. And not only is it on the road, it's at a Big 12 home of a tough place to play. So lots of positives. Now we have a ball game. We're in a grinder. And this is what it's all about right here. First time that Texas Tech and Georgetown have hooked up in 22 years since the 1996 regional semifinals when Allen Iverson dropped 32 on Texas Tech and Georgetown moved on to the Elite Eight. This game at times has had NCAA tournament level intensity and especially from Georgetown here in the second half as they came back from a 23 point deficit to cut it to one before Texas Tech responded. O'Banner at the line shooting one and one out of the timeout. The separation in the first half was Tech's elite defense. The second half, the intensity has not been there. And, and this is why they're not a complete product yet. Remember, Ted, I think this has something to do with it. Defenses in the second half are not in front of the coaching staff. And so you have to have maturity and intensity to do it on your own. Offensive foul against Georgetown. It's on Murray trying to clear out Harmon. That's Murray's fourth. Little shove right there. It was tough to see from that angle. Officials got that though. Nearing the three minute mark. Harmon at the offensive end. Off balance. Harmon got it back. Fresh 20 for Texas Tech. And Mark Adams slows him up. No hurry needed right here. Bacho slipping to the basket. Isaacs couldn't find him. O'Banner driving baseline. And fouled. A cook, a cook was there for Georgetown. It's his second. Now one, one thing that comes to mind right here with Georgetown is they are not deep. Now, Coach Ewing has played nine guys tonight, but he's led heavily. Murray, who's been out with injury, Ted, played 34 minutes. Spears, 34 minutes. Jay Heath, 31. A cook, a cook, 31. And so all the effort it takes to come back from being basically down 20 to cut it to one. That's a lot of energy and intensity exerted. Texas Tech has scored eight in a row since Georgetown cut it to one. Spears trying to get around Isaacs. Inside as a whirl around Bacho. Ball still loose as a whirl collects it. And a foul inside against Texas Tech. Boy, Georgetown desperately needed a bucket right there. And as a Waro, second and third efforts. Good movement from Georgetown. You get him inside. He misses the first one, but that big frame right there bulls his way to get the offensive rebound. That is huge as Georgetown is down nine right there. A chance for a three-point play for Ezzaruro. Bacho the rebound, and he traveled. He was off balance as he got it. Bacho falling to the floor, shuffled the feet, and it's a turnover. It was tough to see from where we are, Chad, but it almost looked like he was anticipating some kind of contact. 
Cook hasn't scored. Now he turned it over. Isaacs with the steal. Right there. He did the right thing, went to the rim. She used those long arms and just tried to finish. Pacho looking to set the screen on Spears. 150 to go, under 10 to shoot. Isaacs, the scoop! Pop, Isaacs slicing to the rim. And a timeout with 144 to go. The freshman coming through for the Red Raiders. And, and think back to when it was 62-61. It was Isaacs' drive down the lane. Finally getting a bucket protect that took the lid off the basket. See that little hesitation? Boy, for Georgetown, you don't want to go over top of a screen 35 feet from the basket because what that allows is an angle right there. And the rotation, slow coming over, and again, a group of four really good freshmen here, but it's been Isaacs who's been the most ready early in his career. He's made some plays here in the second half that show you why. That is so tough to going against the grain like he did trying to attack the basket and still flipping it in with his right hand. So Texas Tech's lead is nine with 144 to go again. The Red Raiders led by as many as 23 before Georgetown put together an epic run to cut it to one. What's important now here in the final 144? Well, it's interesting as you think, okay, Tech's up nine. Why did Mark Adams call the timeout? Well, he's up nine, and he's defensive-minded, and he's, they're talking about matchups. They're talking about sol being solid. And right now they're talking about, about two more stops, assuming we take care of the basketball, is going to seal this thing. And then if you're Georgetown, you're – trying to extend this game obviously you have to execute but things have to be downhill you have to force help against tech you can't take and settle for a quick three on these next couple of possessions spears brings it up for the hoyas does georgetown have something left Spears trying to get around Bacho. A cook. Tyson with the rebound. Oh, there's one of the stops that you mentioned for Texas Tech. And it's just tough to get all the way to the rim against Tech. You, you might get an open look like it did there if you move the ball, but it's going to be a jump. They're going to give up in the very worst a jump shot, and you got to make it. Four on the shot clock, Bacho off the roll, ran into a cook and turned it over. Murray, pull up three. Tyson with the rebound, 50 seconds to go. Yeah, right there, you, you want to drive it. And I think Murray, who's been great tonight, you know he's fatigued. He's, he is not in game shape after coming off the injury. Sometimes it's just easier and pull up for the jumper right there. You, you want to drive it, try to stretch out this game if you can. But he's been fabulous. I mean, he guts the effort from him and Georgetown here in the second half. They were left for dead and could have laid down, and they did not. Harmon at the line with one more free throw. To your point, Brandon Murray, 18 points after missing the last two games with the hip injury. Meanwhile, Davion Harmon, with that free throw, 12 points tonight. He has hit 1,000 in his career. Missed the second, O'Banner with the rebound. And a foul with 40 and a half to go. Harmon will be right back at the line. It's been a circuitous route for Harmon. Two years at Oklahoma, last year at Oregon. And returning to the Big 12, and his home state of Texas, settling down in Lubbock for his senior year. 1,000 still a big number. It's a milestone that Davion Harmon cares about. Well, 
when he came out of high school, he was a four-star top 50 player in the country. Remember, he, as you mentioned, signed with Oklahoma. Ron Kruger was the coach there at the time. It's the guy, he, he can score, very good on-ball defender. And he's got, he definitely has a toughness to him. And I think you'll see that evolve and progress, especially as Tech gets into conference play, because they're going to need that from him, especially as a lead guard, because you can't expect Isaacs as a freshman. He hasn't been through that grind in January, February. Yet. So Harmon's leadership is going to be huge. Final 40 seconds. Here comes Primo Spears. Isaacs the deflection. Still Georgetown ball. I can't wait for the Kansas-Texas Tech matchups because then Harmon can go up against his childhood friend and former high school teammate Jalen Wilson. And Wilson has played at an All-American level here in the first month for Kansas. Heath over the top. Bacho another rebound. Ahead to Davion Harmon. Punctuation for Texas Tech. And he's raising the roof too. Spears, Bacho meets him at the rim. It goes, plus the foul. Here's Back Harman. to Harmon. Yeah, Harmon, probably about 6'1", Ted. That's all you and I are, raising the roof right here. Do people still raise the roof? I guess. Maybe on Harmon did right there. He can make it cool again. <laughs> Spears misses the free throw. Bacho with it. Hang on. Thought it was just one free throw because the basket was good. <laughs> You've got to give Georgetown credit in the second half. Yes, it's going to end up with them at 500. Timeout before Isaacs throws the lob to Tyson. Foul away from the ball. But there is something to build on here in this environment for Patrick Ewing's team. One that he revamped after a historically bad season a year ago. Yeah, it's another L. But can they draw something from that big run in the second half that allow Georgetown to stay in this. I, I think without question, there are pieces. You have multiple guards that can score. We talked about those three starters. Mazone had a breakout game. You've got several bigs that provide a little bit something different. They have to get better defensively. And they, were, they were sound in that stretch where they were able to get it within one and made their run. It was sound. It's got to get better. They got to be more intense. They definitely got to get better rebounding. They don't check off and put a body on like Coach Ewing would want at this point. They got dominated on the glass, but those are correctable things. Wayne Bristol hit the side of the backboard. Final 15 seconds. Harmon can just dribble it out here. Texas Tech went up by as many as 23 here in the second half. But Georgetown made the Red Raiders work for this one. Texas Tech victorious, 79-65. And for the 25th straight game, Texas Tech wins here at home. So that'll do it from here in Lubbock. 25 in a row here at United Supermarkets Arena for Texas Tech.